Welcome to the shop. Hope you're having a great day. All right, it's story time again, boys and girls. <laughs> but first, make sure to check out my website. I got a few knives on there. I got shirts on there. I'll put links down in the description, up in the cards, all that good stuff. Amazon links to all the tools I use. Even though this is story time and not knife making time, that's all right. You can still go check out the Amazon links if you need tools. <laughs> I'm sure you started to come here because of knife making. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff as YouTuber tell you. So on the topic of YouTube, that's where I want to start. Now, man, I, I, I sound like a conspiracy theorist here. And uh, I'll tell you, you know, if you watched the last video, which I'll put that up in the cards too, I talk about how YouTube, you know, I'm just not feeling it anymore and how uh, my numbers are dropping and how they demonetized me and all that stuff. Well, I see a lot of comments in my notifications and I'll go to comment back on them and they're gone. Like Keith, Keith, I know you watch every video and I always see your comments, but anytime I go to write back, they're gone. And a few other people I went searching for comments and uh, there's all these comments that I never answered because I never saw them. So, you know, it's a big game they're playing with me, but uh, I'm stubborn and hard-headed, so I'm gonna keep, make video keep making videos. <laughs> I can't even speak. But that, I mean, knife making, I'll be honest, I took a few days off because I'm kind of losing the passion because I learned how to make knives and shoot video all at once. And man, it just done, you know, with my OCD, it's, it's like uh, I can't do one without out the other or I don't enjoy doing one without the other. I enjoy teaching, I enjoy making knives. I love setting up cameras and getting on video. But man, you know, it's discouraging. And now I see they keep messing with my comments and not showing my videos. I've had a few people tell me, oh man, I didn't know you were still making videos. I don't ever get notified about them. So, man, it's a hard life. But uh, it just makes me want to work harder. I don't know why. Like I said, I'm stubborn. <laughs> so I got that out of the way. Enough complaining and bitching. You know, just time to move on and, and uh, try harder, I guess. I mean, I don't know. The more they try to push me down, the more I'm going to fight back. <laughs> Even though I'm doing it all to myself. So let me first say that this isn't a guide how to get away with buying drugs or selling drugs. or It's just my experiences and things I did to make it through my 20 years of heroin addiction and every other drug that's out there. Well, I never did mescaline, but I never saw it. But that's about the only one. <laughs> I digress, so I'm gonna just take you through all these stories. You know, I've been writing them down. Yeah, uh, you guys seem to like story time, so uh, might as well do it. It's fun to do, it gives me some editing time, and then I'll get back to knife making. I promised everyone on Instagram and TikTok and all that I would do it. <laughs> so my first thing is, uh, this one little trick I used to do, and it worked out three out of four times, and the fourth time I got my ass kicked. But I'm gonna leave the stories where I got stabbed and got my teeth kicked in and, and, and beaten to hell for a whole nother episode. So, you know, stay tuned, that'll be down the line. But this was a trick that worked, like I said, three out of four times, at gunpoint, no less. So what I would do, is you know i would go cop probably every two or three days and you know you buy 10 you get like two or three free but the problem is you're going down in the worst parts of dc with like 120 bucks or oh i know what it was it was uh 10 for 80 bucks you know 10 dollar bag so you get two free when you buy a 10 pack so what i would do is i'd always have my money in this hand right this was even, this was before my arm was messed up. So both my arms are good, but I always carry my money because I'm left-handed. You know, that's why this arm is messed up. <laughs> so what I do is I carry my money in this hand, 
but I'd always carry like five one dollar bills or you know four or five dollars I'd always have a couple dollars in my pocket that way and what's happened you know you got to go in these projects and then you got to go up in the building to see the dealers now you know a lot of times like a lot of things that happen that went wrong was when my people weren't out because that's the thing you go down there every day or every other day they start to know you so uh you know but when you don't see people you know someone will be like they they see you down there all the time they'll be like yeah yeah man i got your 10 pack come on so you go up in the building and they run down and put a gun in your face and be like give me all your money so what i always do you know you put your hands up money in this hand money up bam they're nervous you know which is a risk because you're about to get shot in the face if they're too nervous and uh so you're holding your hands up what they do they grab your money they pull everything out of your pockets boom they're not looking at how much money it is they're just looking at they got all your money and cleaned out your pockets so boom bam go out the door you still got your 80 dollars in your hand and your five dollars shorter now the best thing to do is leave your wallet in your car and keys you know keys sometimes they'll let you go but you can also pay someone like 10 bucks to go in and get your keys if you're lucky you know that happened to me once they took my keys and and just threw them in the hallway and told me to get out but they don't want you down in the ghetto if, if you don't have your keys that means you can't leave that means you're calling the cops to be like hey i need my keys so that you know there's little things little details that the experienced guys, but well, that's the thing. These guys robbing you, they're not experienced. If they were experienced, they'd be selling you the dope, if that makes sense. There's little things. So they're just as nervous as you are. They just have the upper hand. And like I said, you know, I've had guns put in my face many times. And yeah, like I said, three out of four times at work. Uh, in fact, the fourth time they didn't have a gun they just kept beating the hell out of me. And well, I told you, I'll get to that story later. <laughs> My plan didn't work. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this isn't a guide on how to do it. In fact, by now, you know, it's a whole different scene. This was, uh, you know, cause I got, a, I got a solid dealer. Let's see. Yeah, I got a solid dealer in like 2008. So in fact, that's why I, uh, got beat because my dealer actually got sick it was in the hospital so i had to go back down and cop and it was a whole new game and that was like 2012 so you know that was eight years ago the whole the game's changed 100 percent by now so you know that's the one thing when you're younger and stupid you know going down the projects it's like a, uh it's like a game you don't realize because you do it every day or every other day you don't realize you know you, every time you step there you're taking your life into your hands because it becomes just second nature and you need the drugs so bad that uh you don't think it's th things like that the thing is even after my heart surgery i slowed down but i didn't really stop it took my mom having her stroke and me realizing if i got caught downtown she would basically die because no one would take care of her. So, you know, it's weird. People would think, oh man, you've had to open heart surgery because of your arm, because of your addiction. So now it's over, but no, just slow down just a teeny bit. People that have never had addiction just don't understand addiction. And even like most of my friends back in the day were crackheads and uh, I always had a car. So, you know, I would smoke crack. I never really bought crack, but I smoked a hell of a lot of it. Believe me. In fact, when President Bush Sr. held up that big old bag of crack, he's like, we got this right across the street. It wasn't right across the street. It was down and it was on South Capitol Street. Uh, maybe about four blocks down. <laughs> that was one of the big crack houses and man, 
I remember sitting in those places and you know, there's two doors and all of a sudden you hear someone knock, you know, boom, 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 boom. And you'd be sitting in there all geeked out, all messed up. And then someone would knock on the you know, other door. And when it was real bad, people would be knocking on both doors at once. And man, it's like SWAT team time. But that was like 1989. That was even before I got into heroin and all that. It's just cause like I said, I had a car and I could always drive people and people would like, just give me hits and all that. Man, down in those DC crack houses back in the day in like 89 and all that, you see these guys in these three piece suits, you know, two, three thousand dollar suits. And, Man, they'd be buying you hits all night and just throwing money around. And, and then you'd go back a couple of months later and they were just like, whew, bad, you know, real bad off. So crack was one of those things I never really understood spending money on because I never liked it. But man, watching my friends just blow everything on it, it's like, whew, man, that's a rough one. See, you know, like meth, Meth is a pretty bad one, but the thing about meth and coke, if you don't have it the next day, you just sleep. You know, heroin, if you don't have it the next day, you gotta figure out a way to get it the next day because you will get deathly sick. And the more you do, the sicker you get and the harder it is and the whole loop you get caught up into. And man, it's tough, it's, it's real tough. Now I will say, like I said, the dealer I had, you know, a lot of people look at drug dealers and think they're scum of the earth. But most of the dealers that I knew that, you know, once I'd come out of the ghetto and I'd have like a steady supply, they, man, I'd go and I'd hang out with them and their families and have kids. They needed the money to support their families and all this stuff. And I'm telling you, the one guy that, was my dealer from like 2007, 2006, no, 2005, because I worked every day because he would front me a week's worth, but I'd go get it every day. Because that's the thing, man, if you got dope, you're going to do it. So every day I'd get off work, I'd go see him, and he would front me a bag, and then I'd you know, do one in the morning. As long as I had my morning shot and my night shot, I worked every day. I was the first one to work. I was the last one to leave. And I worked like, you know, 60 hour weeks. You know, I only missed days. I missed one day because uh, his stuff didn't come in, you know? And that was from 2006, 2005, 2006 to like 2008, 2009. It was like four or five years every day. I only missed one day of work. And like I said, you know, I went from making, uh, I think I started out at like 10 bucks an hour. And by the end, I was making like 17 bucks an hour because I was the hardest worker, you know. I, I, so anyway, I digress. That's a, <laughs> you know, I'm not, like I say, this is how it worked for me. But I, you know, I'm not saying, hey, man, if you don't know how to work, go out and try this. You know, I've seen a lot of people's lives get ruined by drugs and uh, I've lost a lot of people. In fact, I think I said a couple of videos back, if you were to take a bet in 2000, even 2000, even, even 1999, 98, you know, will Dave be alive in 2020? The answer would be no. But most of those friends have passed from other stuff. It's just like going on surviving. <laughs> and the one time in 90, 697 where I actually did kick dope. My mom, you know, we took a trip to Florida and I had I had 50 bags of dope to go to Florida for a week and they were gone in two days. And I was sick, man. I oof, I had never been so sick in my life. I was oh man. It was it was brutal. You know, and I was like, put me on a plane, send me back, do you know, anything. I was trying to figure out places to cop down there and all that. But after three or four days, I was all right. So when I came back, man, you know, I stayed off it for a while, but then me and my friends got into the club scene. You know, this is 96, 97. So that meant ecstasy and meth, you know. Back then it was like pink champagne meth and all this stuff. And uh, ecstasy would be like press tabs. 
And after a while I started learning, oh man, what they're doing is they're taking heroin and crystal meth and putting them in the press tabs and calling it ecstasy. You know, it wasn't real ecstasy, but it, it helped me stay clean. I had a girlfriend for a while and all that. And uh, yeah, but that only lasted maybe two years. And man, just watching everyone on crystal meth and man, like I say though, you don't have it the next day. You're not sick. You might feel like crap, but you're not sick. <laughs> Until you get way down the meth rabbit hole, then it's real bad. But, uh, whew, man. So that's my tricks of the drug trade. I mean, I, I couldn't, I came up with that nail like, man, that's an awesome title to name all my copping tricks and all the bad things that happened to me, you know. The stab story and the getting jumped story and all that, that'll come later. And, and then I, I got a few stories written down here from uh, when I didn't do drugs or before I got into heroin. I always did drugs. Man, I started doing drugs when I was 13 years old. But that was just like smoking weed and drinking. And I learned quick I didn't like drinking. <laughs> so, you know, Xanax, all those other things. But so I'm going to just call it there. That's enough story time for you guys i gotta go make these knives i'm just killing time and putting it off procrastinating <laughs> make sure to like subscribe hit the bell all that good stuff uh yeah like i said in the beginning my website's up in the cards uh down in the description amazon links all the tools i use for knife making if nothing else that should be a uh, uh that should, that should be how I end it. All that crap I went through, I haven't touched any drugs for, well, I, I, I gotta be honest. My mom was on hospice and they gave her a whole bottle of morphine and I was on methadone and I got down and I was coming off of methadone like one milligram a month, one milligram a month. And I still felt it. And I had this bottle of uh, liquid morphine and uh, I started t messing with that. But that was like uh, two and a half years ago. I've been off methadone for two years now. So, man, and I had to pour out the hardest thing I've ever had to do. It was liquid morphine, straight liquid morphine. And I poured half the bottle out and got off of meth after another six months. But man, whew. Talk about rough. I still look back and can't believe I did it. Oh, and my mom didn't need it. She was on hospice. She wasn't in pain. I never, that's why I had the whole bottle because I never gave it to her. I just wanted to make that clear. I wasn't stealing drugs from my mom. If she was in pain, she would have gotten it first. Anyway, all right. I'll put the whole playlist of story times here and my website's right there. Hope y'all having a great day and as always, take it easy.